Good morning, everybody. It has been a long time since I've been able to speak to people. I tried to lead my followers as best I can. Apparently, some of them still remember me. We do celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And, and yes, as Connie asked me before the show, I do like corned beef and cabbage. But I would hope that when people think of St. Patrick's Day or of me or any of the Holy Fathers, that they think how our messages relate back to God. God is the reason for everything. Without God, there's nothing. Many of you out there are having problems. In my time, <laughs> almost everybody had problems. The people were abused. They were treated like slaves. I tried to tell them that even though life was harsh for them, when they passed and went, went home, they would enter heaven. And that heaven was this magnificent place. It was a place that people could not even conceive of. Now, I didn't know for sure what heaven was like. I did a lot of reading. I studied. I read the Gospels as they were presented to me. So I accepted what they told me as fact. Now that I'm on the other side, I understand that heaven is even far greater than anything that was written during my time. Heaven is a miraculous place. Many people don't believe it. Heaven is just on the other side of a dimension. You are looking at spirits every day. Spirits are around you. They're trying to, lot, to guide you. Angels are around you. There is so much going on around you that you have no conception of. Most of these spirits are trying to guide you and help you. However, there's much evil energy around that is also trying to guide you. That evil energy is trying to take you away from your life path. It's trying to lead you to make decisions to hurt others. That evil energy is trying to have you show anger, show hatred. It's trying to have you show greed. That energy is trying to make you believe that money and wealth is the only thing that's important in this life. Evil is trying to lead you away from all of the important things. Following your life plan is the most important thing you can do. Now, you won't know that what your life plan is because you're supposed to exert free will to follow the words of God. Free will can be a great thing or it can be a terrible thing. You've heard that. You've heard that many times. Every time one of us comes through to speak, we try to tell you that free will can be the best thing in your life or the worst thing. If you use your free will to follow God and to do what he asks you to do, then free will is the best thing you will ever have in your life. But if you use free will to follow evil, then it can be the worst thing. What a conundrum. You have to make the decision. When you return home, oh, you'll see you can't blame anything on anybody. Because everybody knows over there what you've done. There are many of you, and I know you hear this every week as well, that have accumulated great wealth, much more than you can ever need to enjoy life. There's many people that have almost no wealth, but totally enjoy life. They know how to look around them and see the beauty of, of the world that God's given them. They can enjoy the simple things. They can look at a flower and think that that is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. They can look at hummingbirds, look at the miracles of God, look at a newborn baby. The greatest miracle of God, the fact that he has allowed two cells to come together to make you what you are, is a miracle that no man is ever going to duplicate. Oh, well, you can think you're very smart, but you're not. 
Sorry to tell you that. Actually, you're all pretty darn stupid. Because God is around you, and you are too stupid to understand it. Well, how you like those languages? You didn't expect that to come from me, did you? Well, I always spoke like that to my parishioners when they were following me. I would tell them what was right and what was wrong. And I didn't play around. I made them understand that if they did not understand that they did not understand the words of God, they would, well, I I was wrong here. I told them to go to hell because all the gospels said that hell existed. I had to come over here to find out that it doesn't. The church made that up. Yes, my church made that up. That's pretty direct too, isn't it? Just to say as my church is doing things now, they've done things that are horrendous. They've driven people away from the church because the priests couldn't lay their hands off of the older guys. The kids, they affected terrible. They did things that were beyond any description, and they drove people away from the religion. How direct is that? It's true. Now, I know that they're trying to rebuild the faith, and I think that they will. There's many, many wonderful, incredible people that follow the Catholic religion. I love all of them. God loves all of them. But man created a foundation. Oh, I use the word man. They were priests. Priests created a foundation that chased away many, many people from our religion. And now we are forced to rebuild it. I say we. I try to influence all the good priests, all the bishops. Now, once you get over here, you have to understand that there are no religions. All souls are the same. Muslim souls are treated the same as Catholic souls. There are many people that follow churches that do not speak God's words. There are many churches that only care about power and strength. And yes, the Catholic Church was among them. We try to guide the church members to do what is right. But just the same as you can guide individuals to use their free will to do what is right, organizations can use their free will to do what is terrible. All of you out there are simple individuals. All of you out there know what is right and what is wrong. If fathers beat the mothers, that's terribly wrong because a child sees it and will probably go up, grow up to think it is right and will probably beat his wife and the chain of violence continues. But more, imp well, not more importantly, but importantly, how you influence your children lays the foundation for what is to come for humans. If every father and mother guided the child to spread the words of God, to live according to his messages, to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, within several generations, coexistence would become a reality. Today, it is very difficult to know what is right and what is wrong. God has given you great technologies. Well, they're not as great as many of the other cultures in the, in the galaxy, but he's given you knowledge, great knowledge, compared to what you knew before. When I walked the earth, we had to rely on very scarce documents and writings and word of mouth. Today, you have this wonderful social media. Did you notice that I was a bit sarcastic when I said that? Social media is leading the youth away from God in many instances. How many times do you see your children bring up a show on social media that speaks of God? It'll speak of werewolves and vampires but not God. 
God is real. Vampires and werewolves aren't. Why do you let them live in fantasies? I guess I'm getting a bit carried away here this morning. Maybe the opportunity is going to my head. But I look around and I see all this terrible evil. I see how the evil is influenced your politicians. I see how your politicians are influence, influencing the future of your children. I see how your teachers are not teaching history. When the founding fathers created the United States, they stated that all men were equal under God. Well, what was the end of that? Under God. All men are equal under God, and that is a God-given truth. There are those that were sent back to achieve more than others. There were those that were sent back to just simply serve God. There were those that were sent back with karmas that had to be replaced in their life plan, and many are doing that. God is the answer. There's only one answer, and it's God. Now, if you want to do something, help spread the book that you were just shown. Those are all messages of God. That's all that's in that book, his words. If you take time to read them, you'll find peace, you'll find happiness, and you'll find guidance. There is no excuse for not knowing what God wants of you. He is going out of his way now to bring you messages. All you need to do is pay attention to them. Now I say all that you need to do. There are many things of evil that are diverting you from what you should be doing. You have to overcome them. Many of you are leading very, very difficult lives, and we understand that. We try to guide, and we try to show you how you can help your lives. Think of the difference between your human life and your soul life. Even though you may have a difficult human life, you can have an incredible soul life. Do not let what is happening to you in your human life destroy the life of your soul. You see, your soul's life is everlasting. So that's what's really important. This human life is a couple years and then you return. I know that you're, many of you are living in the moment, but we want you to understand that the moment is not what controls the life of your soul. A human life is but a heartbeat in the life of your soul. Use that heartbeat to follow his words, to spread his words, and to simply live a good life. I hope that many of you will actually pay attention to what I said today. Sometimes I'm a little blunt, but you're still eating corned beef and cabbage on my day, so that's proof that maybe people did listen to me in the past. I'm giving you the opportunity to listen to me in the future. Be a servant of God. There can be no better thing in your life. Speak his words, read his messages, and just truly understand and point your soul towards the path that leads you to heaven. Guide the young. That's the key to your future. So thank you. God's here with me because I don't think he trusted exactly what I was going to say, but I think he's he's nodding, so I guess we're good here. So he blesses all of you that are listening. He does so every week. Tell your friends about his web messages. We bring you plenty of chances to hear his words now, so just tell others. So God bless all of you. Thank you for listening to me. And have a great week following God's words.